A very warm welcome to all viewers of this presentation on fabricating three-dimensional structures to be used as a gas sensor array. My name is Nishya Isaac and I am a PhD student at Technical University of Ilmenau in the field of nanotechnology. Starting with motivation for this research, uh, we need to develop gas sensors which are low cost, robust, miniature and efficient in their energy usage because they need to be used uh, in air quality monitoring, wireless sensing networks and smart buildings. One of the ways of making this work is with a bottom up process called gas phase electro deposition. This process requires three basic steps. The first step is generation. When you pass a gas between two metal electrodes, which are at a certain distance from each other and induce a plasma uh, in this region, you get uh, a spark discharge. And based on this, a, a soup of ions are created. There are three components to it. There are the gas ions, there is the charged metal particles, and there are the electrons, of course. Once the generation phase is ongoing, the next phase is transition where the soup is transiting from the generation region towards the substrate where we are going to collect these particles. The substrate is a conducting plate uh, which is negatively charged and a pattern photoresist on top of it. Uh, when the gas ions which have a higher mobility they come onto the photoresist they start deflecting the charged metal particles into the openings and as a result of this nanostructures can grow out of these openings on the photoresist. We did some uh, finite element method simulations for this to understand this uh, increase in electric potential of the photoresist. And what we see is that the curve becomes sharper as the potential increases. And when we make some uh, electron microscope images for such depositions, we see that the structures are following this uh, focus effect of these openings. We call this the nearest neighbor interactions because with the effect of these nearest neighbors, we can start growing such bridging structures. Instead of having one material, what we can also do is have a, a pyrex glass substrate, for instance, which is non-conducting and have domains of a metal, for instance, gold here, which are completely independent of each other. And when we start changing the source of our nanoparticles, uh, in a sequential manner, what we can do is we can decorate the surface with two or three or four different material bridges next to each other. As we see here that the first bridge which is red in color is constructed already and the second uh, set of bridges which are green in color are being formed. We make some electron microscope image, uh, images of these uh, steps and we clearly see that uh, these bridges can grow out of uh, these openings which have access to the gold domains and form bridges. And we can do this over a larger area and in a span of about 150 seconds, we can grow over a thousand bridges of different materials next to each other forming a sensor array. Continuing this further, uh, looking at the overview picture of our uh, chip, what we see is that in a sequential manner, we are growing platinum, then nickel oxide, and then gold bridges next to each other, which are separated by a distance of five microns uh, between adjacent bridges. The idea is that we make this three dimensional structure as a sensor. And this chip, which is the sensing chip, we make it into a plug and play device. So I would play an animation here to, to make you understand how this is working. So we have our sensor chip, uh, which is placed inside uh, a chamber. And from the lid, we have the electrical connections going out. Uh, the electrical connections on the pads of the chips are made with uh, pogo pin electrodes. And the electrical connections coming out from the tip are connected to an external circuit, which provides the electrical bias for making resistance measurements. Another animation to show what is happening on the surface. So we have background gas nitrogen and target gas ammonia, which we are sensing. And as it is moving, uh, the platinum bridges, they start interacting with ammonia molecules, which get adsorbed onto the surface. 
not only does it get adsorbed onto the surface, there are some uh, ammonia molecules which are also getting adsorbed onto the nickel oxide surface. As a result, the sensing is done by primarily platinum bridges, but there is some cross sensitivity on the nickel oxide bridges as well. There is no interaction between the molecules and the gold bridges. As a result, no change in resistance can be seen. So we see that there are uh, three different bridges on our substrate. In our experiments, we made an in-house uh, lab view program, which can plot all these changes in resistance in real time for three different materials and for different concentrations, because this lab view program is also connected to a dilution system. So for ammonia gas, for instance, we make in real time a plot where three different concentrations of ammonia gas is taken in nitrogen and a real time plot for relative change in resistance uh, is plotted. And this relative change is defined as the sensitivity of our sensors, not only for ammonia, but we do testing for other gases. For instance, for carbon monoxide, we saw that nickel oxide is the most sensitive bridge and for hydrogen sulfide gold bridges are the ones which were giving the best uh, performance. Since we see that there is also uh, an increase in resistance for other bridges, which means that there is a certain amount of cross sensitivity. Uh, what is possible is that we can extract the data out of these graphs and make uh, use of neural networks or a pattern recognition software and follow the same principle which is for enoses and uh, use them to identify which gases are available in the environment. Coming towards the end of the presentation, there are certain messages which we can extract out of this presentation, out of this research. So the first point is that we made a programmable approach towards deposition of structures. It's a combinatorial approach because you can have multiple materials on the micro scale uh, placed on a substrate where we want them to be. It's a bottom up process, which means uh, you start from nanoparticles and you are growing only in places where the openings are present on the photoresist, which means that this is a more material efficient method as compared to a traditional micro technology method, for instance, lift off. Uh, we showed nearest neighbor interaction. We made some simulations to understand and to show how these self aligned structures are growing and forming uh, interconnect like structures, for instance, bridges. Uh, the gas sensors which we showed, uh, they operate at room temperature and they are low power. So their power consumption is about uh, 50 microwatts, which is very much in uh, tune with what is shown in literature for low power sensing. And last but not the least, uh, this process allows for depositing multiple materials on the same chip, which means that we are working towards lab on a chip concept, which is quite interesting for our future research. I would like to put forward some references from which I've used the results in this presentation. Uh, in the recent past, we've been working extensively on gas phase electro deposition, trying to understand its basics. And these are the uh, some of the papers which we could publish from this work. I would like to thank uh, our funding agencies, so the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft and Karl Zeiss Stiftung, which continuously funds our work. Uh, in the past, we've also been funded by National Science Foundation from the US. Uh, I also provide to you uh, the contact details for our department in case someone is interested. We are very much open to collaborations and uh, trying to explain more our side or learn more from uh, your ideas. A small photograph of our group uh, we made a hiking trip last year, uh, quite interesting to some places around our university. Uh, last but not the least, I thank you all for your attention. Thank you.